Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with RackN for a Edge Lab uh, demo. In this case, we're going to go through a complete setup for Edge Lab using a network connection, so no HDMI or terminal keyboard required, uh, just using a local network connection. Uh, and we're going to go through all the way through a K3S setup. Uh, we're going to do it pretty quickly. This is meant to be sort of a fast tutorial for you. Uh, and if you're interested in more details, of course, everything I'm doing is documented at the Digital Rebar Edge Lab site. Uh, and you can look at the build materials, order your own Raspberry Pis. You can also do this work in any cloud environment. We actually do a bit of scripting in Linode um, for demos and things like that to make it, it very easy and accessible. So please review the documentation, check things out. The goal here is so that you can walk through this yourself following the instructions in the video. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you the end output right now. I've got my system completely set up. I've already got my K3S Edge Lab content loaded. And to install K3S, I literally select the machines and I start the workflow. And that's going to go through the entire install process. It'll elect a leader and then uh, define the systems. The other two machines will wait until the leader is installed K3S and generated the acceptance token. I can literally go into the logs, watch what's going on. This whole process takes about 90 seconds. A significant amount of time is actually just a delay built in while the cluster uh, goes through its own internal bootstrapping process on the local machine. So uh, all those components and pieces are, are built into uh, the, the RackN digital rebar content uh, in the Edge Lab piece. And that's over here. And we're going to actually show you how to build it, install it, and, and where it's located. So in this case, it's finished building the cluster, signal that finished, all three of my machines are green, showing that their tasks have completed. And if I jump over into that system, I'm already logged into the, uh, the master, the host system, and I know that we elected 102 liters, so I can SSH root at 10.3.14.102. That's the one we did as a leader. I have reset these systems, so I need to clear my key. And if I do a K3S on the leader, uh, cube cuddle, get nodes, this is my cluster. I'm gonna show you how to do this from your desktop so you don't have to go through so many SSH hoops and can do real development without actually getting SSH into any of the pies themselves. But for now, uh, we're gonna now start over completely from scratch. So what that means is I'm powering down my whole cluster I'm pulling the USB cables out right now. I am taking my host machine out and I'm putting a fresh key into that machine, a, a fresh SSD, S, SD card into the machine. And I'm gonna power that back on right now, just the host for, for the moment. In the background, I've done several things while I wait for that machine to boot. Uh, one is I have selected the server image. I've downloaded and installed it. I have put a key into my USB uh, reader. So I have a USB reader with a new SD card and I've said flash uh, using my Belena Etcher. So in this case, I'm, I'm literally, I, I've just done this process. I'm now resetting for the next uh, time I go through the process and I'm going to let that go in the background while we get set up. The other thing I've done here is I have set up a wired network on my system. So in this case I have my home network and I have the net, my local Pi network. For this network what I've done is I've given myself a static IP address, go to IPv4, with a uh, class C subnet. So the DRP server is 10.3.14.1 by default. I need to be two so I don't conflict with it. 100 is the DHCP address. Uh, I want to get in before DHCP is turned on by DRP, so I'm, I'm using a static address in this case. That allows me now to access the system, so I can ping 10.3.14. Uh, no, and when the system is up, like it is now, I can now SSH root into that address and 
SSH is not yet enabled. So we're gonna we're gonna wait for a moment. The idea with what I've done here, um, I'm showing you how to do it on uh, my Ubuntu system, but you could you should be able to replicate this setup on just about anything. And I've told it not to use this as a gateway. So this is just a local Ethernet connection so that I can ping the system. And really, I don't even have to keep it um, going until I have. Uh, after I've got this initial connection going because I'm going to switch to Wi-Fi controls from that perspective. Um, sometimes it's handy to have this as a backup. So while we wait for that connection to stabilize in the background, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour so that you can prepare for what's going on in, uh, in this system. So what we've built here, and I have other videos showing, is a four node Raspberry Pi cluster. I've gone through the assembly directions. So we have a literal bill of materials that you can order, exactly what you need. Uh, in this case, I've, I'm using this Cloudlet case. It's uh, very easy and manageable to put on my system. And then I've gone through the assembly instructions, which include, uh, we have a visual version of this, show you the pictures. These are the parts and pieces, wiring the power, installing the SSD cards after I've burned them, attaching them to fans in the case, which is nice to do because they do get warm. And then uh, literally going through, this was the HDMI and keyboard uh, approach that I've also done a video about, and that was pretty much it to get these things running. The whole system costs about $500. And now, according to these instructions, we are now in the setup phase of actually bootstrapping the cluster. Over here, SSH is now okay. I've SSH'd into a similar box. This is a completely fresh build. So now I'm going through, make sure this stays on screen for you. I don't have my key installed yet, so I need a password, which is Rocket Skates, in the uh, digital rebar fashion. So. Uh, R0, K8, TS. So now that I'm logged in, I really don't want to have to keep typing that password. So I'm going to go ahead and put my key on that system, which I have pasted from another, uh, another, another terminal off screen. There we go. So now I can come and go from this system uh, very easily. And now that I'm on it, all I have to do is do a setup where I'm gonna install this to the Wi-Fi. So it's gonna it's gonna use our lo my local Wi-Fi as the gateway. So the cluster and the DHCP in the cluster never contaminate your broader network. So let's do this. Um, I'm putting in my SSID and uh, password for my local Wi-Fi. And it's gonna go through and try and start downloading pieces. Now it's normal for it to say there's a failure in resolution resolution because it's bouncing the network. Now it's on the network and it's gone through and gotten the gotten the pieces. It's going to tell me in this case, this is my correct IP address. I'm dot 90 in this case. I do want to remember that. And uh, right now there's a bug in the system where we're not waiting enough time for this bounce. I just have to rerun it a second time. So it's going through and it's going to set this up but now that I have this address there's several things I can do with this while it goes through all the digital rebar setup and downloads and things like that now I can SSH in root at uh, 192.168.1.90 so now instead of attaching for my local network I'm attaching through the Wi-Fi network so sort of the front door if you will of this system and while we are waiting for it to do the downloads and, and bring digital rebar up, I'm going to also go in, I've verified that I now have Wi-Fi connection. I can go in and I want to do an SSH keygen, build a private key pair for the system, and we're going to make sure this public key gets injected onto the environment so that I can use it to access, I can have allow this machine to bridge into the other three machines in the cluster. The other machines in the cluster are still off right now. If you are replicating this with a fresh cluster, um, go ahead and turn them on at this point. It takes them longer to reset and flash their BIOS um, than the digital rebar system takes to come up. Um, 
I've already gone through that process. So for me, it's already done. They're gonna go immediately into registering for digital rebar. So I'm leaving them off until I'm ready, until digital rebar's up and I'm ready for the, the machines to be identified. Uh, and I do wanna actually get that SH, those, that public key. So I'm gonna need it from here. So we have that queued up. Let's see how our system's doing. So at this point, uh, we've gone through most of the process. Digital Rebar is literally starting the install script and it's up. This is the install script actually starting to upload resources. So I could come back and in my Digital Rebar system over here that I showed you before, I can now attach to the new cluster, totally new IP address. First time I, I've connected, I haven't accepted the self-signed cert, so I have to do that. Excellent. Let's go through that process right now. So I don't want to use, I'm, I'm using a local version of the UX because it has a feature that I want to take advantage of for the system. So in this case, uh, the system's up. There's, uh, we don't have any machines in it and it's still loading content. I'll show you what that looks like. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to add in my public key over here so that I have my public key on all the machines and I'm going to jump over and pull the public key that I just created for the systems onto the environment also. So I'm going to add that key as well. Oops, except there might be a bug. That's not what I want. So the add key button is literally, oh, it does work. It just uh, didn't look like it worked. The add key is, is literally just doing, taking advantage of function I've already had, just providing a wizard that does it. It's installing my keys in a access keys list that's automatically inserted onto systems during discovery. Uh, so when the machines are discovered, both those keys will be injected onto them for easy use. So let's see where we are with our build out. Uh, the system has pretty much completed the script because one of the last things it does is add one of the last things it does is add the subnet. So I'm now completely done. This is good. Move this away for a little while. This subnet is what's needed to netboot Raspberry Pis, uh, including a string on, on option 43. There's some other things that we've done to take standard digital rebar and make it work for the Pis. Um, subnet address is one of them, but we've also modified bootems to be able to link into the Pi bootloader chain in the way that Pis expect to be done. And uh, we've also created a version of Sledgehammer, which is the discovery image that we use that is specialized for the RPIs. Uh, so quite a bit of, of, of tweaking done to make RPIs work. This is not any specialized digital rebar, it's straight off the shelf. So everything I'm showing you would work for any hardware um, or cloud instance that we support, um, which is all of them. So pretty straightforward from that. So now that we've gotten the system ready to go, I've got my keys set up, I can just power them on and go ahead and let the systems register. They're gonna use the cluster is completely self-contained, so they're going to use the the digital rebar uh, DHCP system. So we should see reservations. See the leases already showing up. Um, those leases are going to get attached to machines as they come in and go through the boot process. And then once Sledgehammer is loaded, it will discover and register the systems uh, automatically. Uh, so I will show you that in a moment. The other thing to note here is that we've really started with a very minimal catalog of components, really just community core, task library, and digital rebar itself in the catalog. Uh, the catalog is actually much more extensive, obviously. We don't test everything on Pis, so while there's a lot in the catalog, not everything is appropriate for the Raspberry Pis. Let's see if these machines are ready. So we now, the machines are showing up. They're going through their discovery system and they are, they are now registered. So I now have a completely functional Pi cluster. Um, 
and with even with all the demos and pieces like that still just about a five or six minute build from scratch uh, type of environment what I do want to do is come in and do this k3s install that I showed you before uh, that is under digital reaper rebar provision content it's not yet in the catalog it's um, the sixth uh, of January but it will be soon so you should be able to go in to digital rebar and, and get things from the catalog if it's not or if you want to do editing and extend and play what you need to do is clone this repo which I have done over here and so this is that exact repo I'm in that directory we have a process by which we take the infrastructure as code components and install them in the uh, upload them into a working digital rebar let me grab my digital rebar endpoint address here. So I'm going to set my endpoint to that address. And I, now I've already installed DR, the DRPCLI, so I can say machines list, send it through JQ to make it pretty. And so I'm a, attached to the correct machine with the CLI. And what I want to do is I want to say DRPCLI contents, which is the content here that we're about to try and get I'm in the edge lab so I just want to say contents bundle which is going to take all of the components for the edge lab the parameters the stages workflows templates things like that that we have and I'm going to bundle that into the edge lab YAML excellent and then once I've done that I can just contents upload let me make sure I'm in the right spot to show you this I'll go to the catalog and show you the internal catalog <laughs> contents upload edge lab and if I was in a dev process I would develop on edge lab here then I would bundle it and upload it uh, usually with an amp, double ampersand to just make it a single command but now what I've done is I've taken that I've uploaded it manually into the system and now I have available workflows that are specific for edge lab in this case the k3s install workflow uh, that workflow is a completely self-contained uh, K3S. It'll download K3S, install it. Um, you can override the installs or pre-provide the installs. There's a lot of controls and capability. And now we're back to where I started from the original beginning. I did a K3S install. I said go. And I am now installing K3S. In this case, I have a brand new DRP, so the system need, is going to take a little bit more time downloading k3s and storing it locally into the files location uh, and we do that so that we don't have to keep downloading k3s uh, if you reset the environment so very straightforward from that perspective we're going to go through and install kubernetes there's some interesting things that i didn't show you you can do in the first pass that i want to show you now so in this case, what's happening is they've automatically assigned this profile called cluster one. And as the system builds, you can see it's doing it live right now. We're actually building because we've completed the cluster install. Uh, I can actually get the token or the admin comp file. So this is this is all the information I need to log into the cluster. We didn't do this in the last one, but I want to be able to log into the cluster from my desktop, not rely on the Kubernetes um, uh, you know, SSHing into all these this chain of machines. Uh, and to do that, I have some instructions here, sorry, here um, in the lab documentation. And what you'll notice I need to do is I need to come in and I need to download that admin comp file. So let's do that. And I'll show you what this command looks like here, uh, not here, in here. So uh, over here, no, let's do it here. So in here where I already have access to the uh, system, what I'm doing is I'm going to tell the DRPCLI to go get that parameter I just showed you, decode it because it's stored in an encrypted format because it's secure information into admin conf. Great, so now I have that admin conf file. That admin comp file is set up for the cluster. So one of the challenges is it's gonna try and use a server that I don't normally have access to. Um, I, in this case, I do have access to it because uh, I'm still connected to the no local network. So let's see if I can just uh, use that file over here. And 
I'm just going to run kubectl admin conf get nodes and see if this works. That worked great. Remember, that's because I am connected to the local network. Something you may may not want to do. You might want to only connect to the net local network while you have your cluster going. So I'm going to show you what that looks like because I think that's a better configuration pattern uh, for most most times you're doing this uh, testing. So in this case, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to set this to my local IP address. Perfect. We'll need two of those. And then what I want to do is actually go back through and I want to set up a SSH tunnel to this machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tunnel to 6443, which is the Kubernetes port. And I need to know which machine is my leader in this case. Uh, the leader signified with the anchor is on 101 this time. It's just a race condition, so whichever one comes up first. So it's 10.3.14.101 and 6443. So I'm literally going to be creating a tunnel from the gateway DRP system in the Pies through my Wi-Fi to that system. Oops, and let me correct something. 192.168.1.90. Remember, I have two network connections to the system. Uh, so I just switched to use my Wi-Fi connection for this demo, uh, assuming that I've disconnected my local network port. So here, I now have a SSH gateway through. If I come back over here, and say um, the exact same command, now remember pointing to my local system, gonna work just the same. So the thing to think about here is I'm going from my local system, I'm gateway tunneling to that Kubernetes cluster through the SSH uh, tunnel that I've set up temporarily. Uh, this is really handy because normally I'm, I'm gonna turn off this this uh, local network connection. I don't, I don't need it, I'm gonna disconnect it and not leave it going. Um, or you could leave it going, it's super handy to be able to talk directly to the machines if you want. Um, and that works because I have uh, it added my key and the leader's key to all the nodes in the cluster and let digital rebar propagate them. So I could uh, SSH into uh, root at 192.168, oh, sorry, 10.3.14.101 in this case. That's a uh, sledgehammer running in memory. And I just want to do a K3S, because now it's K3S, cube cuddle, get nodes, exactly the same response. All right, that's a lot of details on how to use K3S. Spend more time showing you how to use it than uh, installing it, which is exactly the way it should be. Uh, one last thing to show you. So I want to exit from here. I want to show you how to reset the environment uh, so that you can get an idea for what it takes to practice and reset. So I'm going to turn the machines off, not the host, not the DRP host, but the actual uh, pies, fan dive. I'm going to delete the machines here. That looks good. I am going to remove that profile. Excellent. And the next thing I'm going to do is just plug them back in. Uh, the machines then wait for them to come up, it shouldn't take particularly long, and then repeat the environment. So uh, now I'm straight back into the Kubernetes install process. So it's exactly what I've been showing you over and over again. Um, the important thing to remember is it, to, to re redo this, we are doing an in-memory boot. So those machines, when they reboot, have nothing that they had before. Um, you need to go through, delete the machines, delete the profile, um, and then let the environment reset. I've been doing this a ton. It's super fast and simple. Just need to remember to go through that cycle every time. I hope this was helpful. Um, we really, really want feedback and interaction on this. We're building this as a shared environment. So please take some time, uh, play with it, go through the process, contribute to the docs and reference architecture. If you're doing this in other environments, add that. We, we definitely want to keep 
um, this process going and we want to see things besides just K3S. K3S is a core building block but we believe we should be seeing all sorts of edge applications coming into the lab. That's what it's designed for. So please help us build out the content. Let us know what you think. Um, we're around. This is Rob Hirschfeld with RackN, um, the Edge Lab video. Thanks.